right, so we are going to get to this roughly, whether you're getting the two color version, obviously it's going to be striped like this. I have not knotted any of this so far and I wanted to show you a couple things. One is that the end you cut after you, so this is the cast on end that I want it to be nice and long so we, ha we can sew the beard on using this end. And then we, we knit one row and we're going to end up with this end and it's going to get loose and floppy. Um, so if you want to kind of tug it in and after a row or two, um, go ahead and weave this in right away. That's definitely an option so that it's not so distracting for you. I, when I join and uh, cut well, either at the beginning, like when I join and try to figure out how long to do it, and then when I cut at the end, I always just sort of use the last set as my length. So the first time I do it, I'm like, oh, this is this is the length I want it, and I kind of measure it out. And after that, I just kind of use the other strands as my guide. So now that I'm done this ridge, I've gone there and back. I'll just cut it now using this first one as a guide. And for this one as a guide, I used one of this as a guide and it kind of keeps going back. So in the notes, I mentioned that I find it easier to knot it right now, as opposed to kind of letting it build up and then knotting it. And that is because having it on the needle, the needle gives it some resistance and something to kind of work against. Otherwise, you're just kind of having all this uh, looseness and this floppiness, even when it's on the ground or the table in front of you. I just find having the stitches still attached to the needle so much easier. Obviously, if you don't find it easier, don't do that. Do the thing that's easier for you. I tested two kinds of knots. I tested both the kind of knot where you take both strands at once, make a loop, and then put it through like that. And I also tested the shoe kind, shoe knot kind, where we just cross them and then do that and then do it again. Both of them work really well. The uh, shoe tying knot, I believe that's called the overhand knot, it will, the ends want to go different ways and uh, but once you block it, they will both go down. Um, if you're using uh, a wool or a natural fiber and it can be blocked, it will just, they will both travel in the same direction. Obviously in this kind of knot, it is much easier for those ends to be traveling in the same direction since they're coming out of the knot in the same direction. But like I said, the other kind of knot, once I blocked it, was completely well behaved and did what you needed it to do. So you're always going to be knotting the same color. So um, make sure that you are tying uh, the same ones with the same ones. And if you are doing a single color one, you may find it easiest again to do it after each there and back because then you will only have the knots or the ends uh, from the current garter ridge that you have just worked. Don't tie too tight. We don't want to distort the edge. Just kind of give it a nice snugging up. Um, so again, you're going to find them. I like to kind of push back. If I've let them go for a while, they will be kind of distorted working the yarn there and back and stuff, these ends will start to work out. These stitches will get loose and floppy and larger. So you will need to make sure that you've got the stitches the same size as the other stitches in that piece of fabric. If you are working the knot right away, as I've suggested, like here, you won't have had a chance for these to really unwind and get all floppy. When it's time for me to join a new piece, I just take the old one, I get about the same length, I pinch it with my uh, other hand or against the, the needle somehow, however you hold the fabric, just you just wanna pinch it because the tendency when you work this first one is to maybe like grab it and let it get too short you don't want that. So if you can kind of brace it or start a little extra long, um, there should be enough uh, extra yardage buffer for no problem if you make these a little longer than I say. And then we just knit across for the increased side. And on the, when we come back, we do the increase on this stitch at the end. It's just a little easier to do it there on the back side than on the right side. This is the cast on because I can tell because it's the longest one. For the bulky yarns, you'll want to be a nice generous just because it takes more to weave across. This has been blocked 
and knotted and um, what we need to do now is trim this up now obviously once you trim too short you're you're too you're you're sort of in trouble so if you think you might want a longer fringe um, trim longer and you can always keep going what I did to trim was I grabbed a book to raise my fringe up and a straight edge the key thing here is to align this diagonal edge with the edge of the book so that they are both parallel. So here's that edge, here's this edge, and then when I go to cut, using the space the book has created so I can get under the fringe there, I'm going to be going parallel to this edge because um, that's the way this was designed, um, was for this fringe to be the same length all along. So um, I encourage you to like, you know, get do a little bit of measuring. How long do you want to start a little longer? Do you want to start a little shorter? Um, just sort of figure out how long you want to cut them. I think I'm going to do this one, let's say uh, about, let's do about this one about an inch, which is about two and a half centimeters. This, uh, this ruler has the inches on this side. So uh, no, I'm, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll do about three. And so I'm going to check the distance this point then I'm just also going to check up here so that um, we can tell that we are kind of parallel rather than eyeballing it and then what I do is I pinch this using the straight edge so that between the book and the straight edge the the fringe is trapped so that it doesn't wobble all over the place and kind of travel so just kind of brush it out get it nice and uh, the way you want it to be. Uh, I'm going to include this one in that one, I think. Uh, this is the middle strand, and so I'm just trying to figure out what to do with it. So let's just brush all of these. And again, we're just going to measure from here to here. Uh, do that properly. Make sure we've got it about right from that edge to that edge. And then I'm going to trap the ends between the straight edge and the book. This one is the one I need to weave in, so I'm not going to cut it. And then I can just really easily trim across. And that's how easy that is. And don't forget, all these ends work really well as gnome stuffing for your next gnome.